Hello, Forbes published an article, and it's actually very good. Let's talk about it. I'm Will, I'm the host of The Bald Book Geek. Like, sub, do the usual, and don't forget, if you want exclusive content or early access to content, please consider becoming a channel member or joining my Patreon. Let's start the show. This article by Forbes is fascinating and really does hit the nail on the head. People forget, and I see this a lot, I love this show, but it's been cancelled. It's a win for the toxic dude bros, and it, it's not. I promise you it's not. Disney will screw up again. <laughs> Disney, the same company that will edit out any LGBT content for markets overseas, such as China, yet will make a nice Happy Pride video. Just saying, people forget that, and I find that very hypocritical. But we need to talk about this article. I will link this article in the description and in the comments, if I remember to put it in the comments, but it will be in the description. So I'm going to pick out key points. So the show itself was not large, was not a hit, largely because it was poorly written, riddled with plot holes and a very uneven acting from its various leads. It looked cheap despite its enormous costs. While some outlets want to paint the cancellation as a win for toxic dude bros in the fandom, as if no women could possibly have disliked the acolyte, and others saying its failure will cause Disney to avoid trying new things, the real culprit is twofold. The show was far too expensive, and it did not draw big numbers to justify the cost. The show was far too expensive and did not receive critical acclaim or widespread fan support. Both of these factors include a common theme. The acolyte simply cost far, far too much, and the investment was not met with a huge viewership numbers like The Mandalorian or Andor. So, it breaks down the costs. It didn't look expensive. I thought the show looked quite cheap, if you want the honest truth. The Acolyte is the second most expensive show on Disney's list. 180 million after Andor's 250 million, but that's only the total spent. If you look at cost per minute of footage, the Acolyte costs a hell of a lot more. 671.641 per minute produce, and Andor cost 150,000 less per minute, thanks to a longer um, ep episode count, basically. No other Disney show, Disney Star Wars show, has received 12 episode season, and very few episodes across all of Star Wars were as long. It was a very expensive show to produce. As you can see in the chart, to quote this article, and or run for two and a half hours longer than to longer total than the other shows. I mean, let's just put this into real numbers. If you are spending this amount of money on a show and you are creating something and you are putting something out there, it's not about art. It's not about artistic freedom and these great writers and a person behind it being the former showrunner of Harvey Weinstein. We must remember that. And I will mention that repeatedly. I mean, creep, right? I mean, let's be real here. This show cost too much and performed far worse than any other Disney Plus Star Wars series. And that's why it was cancelled. If it had been hugely popular, with viewership numbers closer to The Mandalorian than Andor, it certainly would have been renewed. But critical reaction was lukewarm and fan reaction was largely very negative. Viewers didn't show up to watch it. And I don't believe it was due to the show's diversity or new setting in the High Republic, but the overall sense the show was poorly executed, with a gimmicky twin storyline that never worked. Some truly abysmal moments like the witch, chance, and the biggest star killed off in the first five minutes. And this is the thing. That is true. I think the uneven storytelling, I think the poor writing, and I think the fact the show was so uneven, and then actors behaving badly in public when they were told not to by the company producing the show is very telling. They also pinpoint in this article, uh, the person that wrote this, I do think the acolyte had potential, and perhaps the second season could have realised that potential, but I remain baffled at Disney's 
placing this much trust and this kind of budget in the hands of someone with very little experience. It reminds me of the train wreck that is Amazon's Rings of Power, a series with a huge budget and showrunners with very little experience. And I agree with this, Disney needs to try new things. Let's be honest here. And I think, and highlight some of the comments in this article, the main problem with Star Wars since LucasArts joined Disney is the lack of clear vision or strategy of the franchise. They are throwing mud at the wall and seeing what sticks. That's the problem. They're trying every new thing they can to try and squeeze in different genres. They've done it with the MCU, and it doesn't work. And it's fascinating. They also pinpoint a few other things in their articles, but overall, I think the problem is people have been burnt. There have been some very good things. I think the first season of The Mandalorian is fantastic. Rogue One. My God, I love that movie. But, let's be real here, they need to go with what works. I want more Mandalorian Season 1 style content and more films like Rogue One. And that's it. And I do find it fascinating, the reaction to this. People are fascinating. Just just the meltdowns, the sadness, the body counts, all of this stuff. Someone on Twitter pointed out, The Acolyte was constantly in the Nielsen top 10, and the Disney metric for newing is now, apparently, series must be in the top 5, or must be top of the ratings of the previous series. It's a mindset born of capitalist growth and not com- creating a compelling stories. But this is the thing. And I say this. It's a company. It's a corporation. Disney want to make money. Disney are bleeding money. So let's just make a show that works. Let's make something that works. And seeing some of the people seethe over this, like I said in my previous video. And I, one account, one thing I do kind of agree with here, unfortunately the Acolyte was not good for straightforward mundane reasons, like most other Star Wars show, but it got culture ward in an extreme, in extreme bad faith. And I do agree, there was definitely some people that took it way too far. I watched it before making judgments, and... Uh, oh, that Jacob dude. Massive day for incel YouTubers with under 10k subscribers making the worst clickbait and problematic videos you've ever seen. Every video on YouTube is clickbait, dude. Review bombing got so bad they completely unrelated movie called Acolyte starting... Uh, yeah. The people... I think people do go too far. I think there is a whole thing. And... Yeah, this is cool, but why would we want more of this when you could have CGI Uncanny Valley <laughs> Luke Skywalker in every single Star Wars project? And this is my thing. I both agree and disagree with a lot of what people are saying, and I can kind of find some middle ground. I do think there are people that went too far. But this is also the thing. Companies need to make money. People, people that make these shows need to make money. It needs to have consistent viewership. It's not about art. It's not about being creative. But, I mean, this is the thing. One person put, it's generally a bleak time for television, not just because the acolyte. Everything gets cancelled. Nothing gets a chance to find its footing like before. Companies wonder why no one watching and no one wants to get involved in unfinished stories, which is true, but the ultimately the problem is here. This show fell out of numbers, and that's it. And I do think the way we consume television now is completely different. And maybe the episode format is not good. Maybe they should start dropping series so people can binge watch, or at least finish a story arc in that first season, 
rather than just leaving it on footnotes. Another person put, I rewatched Buffy, and while you see the sparks of greatness, the first few episodes are so clunky, peg-legged. Like, yeah, but Buffy's audience grew, it didn't die. <laughs> I mean, I said this in the previous video, the audience grows, and the difference being is that Buffy found its footing. This show remained consistently awful from day one. I didn't like the pilot, I thought it was weak, and it seemed to have some sparks of greatness in that first two episodes, and then it just kind of fell apart. Plot holes, poor writing, poor acting, and Disney, and I hate saying this as much as I don't like Disney, are right to make this decision. At the end of the day, it should... Television is about profit. And that's it. That's all it is. It's about what makes money, what gets a viewership, what gets an audience. And the only reason Rings of Power is getting more seasons is because of a contract, not because people are watching it. Let's be honest here. And that's the difference. So, I will leave this here. Talk to you guys later. Hate me all you want in the comments. And have fun. Bye.